This lecture is about inception networks and before that we have seen CNN, convolutional neural network and residual networks. So after that we are going to look at inception network. So what is the need for or what was the need for inception network? We have already seen different convolutional neural networks like AlexNet and VGG16 and then further improvement in these networks with the help of residual network. And in residual network we have seen that we can make our neural network very deep. Now the other way to look at the CNN is that um, as we go deeper in our neural networks so we have more challenges in terms of uh, uh, controlling its overfitting and uh, vanishing gradient and another motivation is that if we have different size of if we have an image where the objects are of different size for example if we look these two images so let's say we have this image this is the size of image and let's say it is uh, 10 by 10 and let's say we have another image which is also of the same size let's say it is 10 by 10 though it doesn't seem to be like this but uh, we are considering their sizes equal so let's say these both images they have similar size but inside these images the objects are of, are of different sizes so because of different size of the objects it is better to have a convolutional layer with different size of filters earlier in CNN we have seen that we have one filter one CNN filter and then pooling filter and then another CNN filter another pooling filter so we are going sequentially and deeper into a network but here the idea is that because we have objects of different size so it is better to have filters of different sizes because filters of different size they can extract the features in a better way so inception networks instead of going deeper into the network we build a network which is wider at each layer so the filter kernels with different sizes on same level we widen network instead of going deeper so that is the whole idea of inception networks and how do we do that So this is a block diagram of inception network. In this network we can see that uh, here we have for example an input image. We can consider an input image or input inputs. And then to process that input we have a filter of one size one by one and a filter of another size and a filter of third size and then we also have a pooling layer. So all these layers, all these filters and pooling layer they are at the same level in the network they are not in going deeper they are not sequentially they are not sequential in our network rather they are at the same level and they are processing this network this input at the same time and after that after these convolutions all the outputs they are concatenated so that that concated, concatenated output it can be fed to the next layer. So at, at each layer in inception network in, at each layer we have this type of wide networks wide filters. So if we have small object in our images in our input then 3x3 three, three three convolution or 1x1 one one convolution they can better extract the features there and if we have object of large size then 5 cross 5 convolution or this filter it can extract the features from that bigger size object in a better way now we have different types of filters at the same level so it also causes a computational complexity at that level 
However, there is a trick to solve the problem of computational complexity and that trick is that whatever before applying actual filter we have a one cross one convolution in the same way before applying actual filter we have a one cross one convolution so these one by one convolution they actually reduce the overall computational complexity of this inception network uh, however in in case of max pool we first apply pooling and then pass it through one cross one convolution filter and uh, what is the process of concatenation so here we get the output like for example if the input image is of this size this goes through this one by one convolution so what and uh, these filters one by one convolution filters they are 64 so what will happen the output will be 28 by 28 by 64 so that one it will be concatenated perhaps here this one and after that we will look at uh, the this this process that one by one convolution then three by three convolution we will look at that how this is actually reducing our computational complexity we will look at it in a later slide but at the moment we are only looking at that how this process actually happens so this is another in, this is again our input it passes through this convolution 96 filters and then a three cross three convolution filter so and the number of filters here are 128 so what happens that we get this one so this process actually generates this block so this is 28 by 28 with 128 with the, the number of channels 128 so this is this here this is the process of concatenation that how we are combining the outputs of different filters in the same way we have this convolution 5 cross 5 convolution which has the number of filters uh, number of filters are perhaps 32 so this one goes here the purple one this is actually the output of 5 cross 5 convolution and uh, for max pooling this is the output number of filters are 32 and here the orange one this block is actually the output of max pooling so in this way <coughs> a different filters outputs are concatenated in our inception network now we want to see that how this one cross one convolution before three cross three convolution and one cross one convolution before five cross five convolution how this system is actually reducing the computational complexity so now we are going to see how this uh, one cross one convolution in this slide these one cross one convolutions how they are going to reduce the overall computational complexity so let's see we have an input image of this size 28 by 28 by 192 it has 192 channels and uh, without if without using any one cross one block if we directly apply this filter of size 5 cross 5 then uh, how many number of computations or particularly multiplications we have to compute so this is the 5 cross 5 filter since we have to apply on this image so its number of channels they should be equal to the number of channels here for the input so this 5 cross 5 filter <coughs> it has 192 channels and when we apply convolution here then just to calculate one pixel here if we have to calculate one pixel here <coughs> then how many multiplications do we need 
so this one this is our let's say one cross one filter it goes here this filter this goes here like this one this is one cross five cross five cross nine filter so this is going to take convolution so this whole block which is 5 cross 5 cross 192 this is being multiplied by this one pixel 1 cross 1 cross mm, sorry no this is multiplying here with 5 cross 5 cross 192 so to calculate this pixel how many multiplications do we have to calculate that is equal to this one for the calculation of this one filter we have to multiply the multiplication we need to do are 5 cross 5 cross 192 so it will give us this one pixel here and if we have to calculate this whole image 28 by 28 you can see the first channel of the output then uh, we will multiply this 5 cross 5 cross 192 with 28 by 28 so these many multiplications they will give us only this one image or one output with only one channel but if we have the number of filters are if 32 then we have to multiply this whole one with 32 so this one image with one channel it will require this many these many multiplications up till 28 and for 32 channels for these 32 channels we will multiply them with 32 so if we directly convolve 5 cross 5 filter with this input then the total number of multiplications required will be 120 million if you calculate it here exactly these it is this number and approximately that is 120 multiplications and now we see what is the benefit of using one cross one convolution in between these filters in between this filter so now here we have this one is one cross one cross 192 so this is a one cross one convolution block and we will convolve it with with this one we convolve it with this input so what will happen just to calculate one output here just to calculate one pixel output here how many multiplications do we need one cross one cross 192 because the number of channels of this block is equal to the number of channels here so actually to calculate this pixel one pixel here the total number of multiplications be, will be 1 cross 1 cross 192 1 cross 1 cross 192 if we have to calculate uh, this 28 by 28 I mean this size is 28 by 28 so to calculate this one this frontal slice all the pixels in this frontal slice how many multiplications do we need this one multiplied by one multiplied by 28 times 28 <coughs> so these number of multiplications multiplications these number of multiplications they will require to only calculate this one this frontal slice this frontal image and if we have to calculate all these 16 channels then we will multiply them with 16 so this intermediate one cross one convolution it will 
cause around 2.4 million multiplications so if you calculate this whole one up to this 16 then it will cause it will require 2.4 million multiplications and then after getting this intermediate product or output we convolve it with the actual filter 5 cross 5 filter and since the number of channels here have reduced and the number of filters here are 32 so to calculate the whole output which is which will be 28 by 28 by 32 because we are calculating the same output so it will require for one pixel it will require 5 cross 5 cross 16 multiplications for one pixel it will require 5 cross 5 cross 16 multiplications and for this whole image uh, for whole frontal slice we will multiply it by 28 times 28 and if we have to calculate all these 32 channels then we will multiply it by 32 so effectively this portion will require how many multiplications if you calculate it they will require around 10 million multiplications so because of the introduction of this one cross one convolution one cross one convolution block here what has happened the overall multiplications have now reduced from 120 million to only 12.4 million so this is the way to reduce the computational complexity particularly in our inception networks that by using intermediate one cross one convolution block <coughs> we can reduce the number of multiplications and overall computational complexity so this is all about inception networks and uh, this one is called inception version one like uh, you can also see here it uh, inception network it has different variations means uh, different improvements were incorporated in them um, so this is the basic idea of inception network this is also called google net so another name for this one is google net